The map is Crimson Feud. The players are Big Priapism, otherwise known as Achieve Jaguar, with the incessant name changes on his second account that confuse everyone to this day. And then we've got Bravo. Both of these players are going Aeon. We've got 1700 versus 1600. I think their ladder ranking is about the same-ish. I'm not 100% sure what Jaguar's actual ladder ranking is. So I think that this will be a good matchup. Bravo dropping a first land factory. Epic adjacency is available on the Crimson Feud because you've got two mass extractors perfectly spaced with your Hydro to get triple adjacency right off the bat. Jaguar is also taking advantage of that with his first land factory. Of course, since you are within build distance without even walking, you can go for four mexes and then the Hydro without stalling. And then if you just drop a couple of P-Gens to tide you over, you can then expand to the Hydro on this side and gain 200 power in the early game. And it is a beautiful thing. Crimson Feud is a completely symmetrical map um, that has a fair bit of reclaim available. You do need to keep in mind that there are some T2 wrecks on this side. So 400-ish and 500, uh, it's about 500 on each side for those wreckages and then the same thing on the other side along with having quite a few rocks in all of the little dips and gullies and little crevices all around here then we've got t1 rex in the middle so obviously this is going to be not probably not enough mass that if one player got it and the other didn't it would end the game but it is enough to build quite a few tanks with and hopefully get a little leg up over your opponent We've got some raining going on, a flare moving around the back side, which is actually a very smart move because more than likely the ACU is going to be building on this side and you're not going to move your commander to the other expansion. Therefore, if there are engineers building the mass extractors and or the hydro, you can pick them up with that lab. Knowing that though, Jaguar is going to move a tank with a scout over to the left side of his base and hopefully he can pick that up. I don't know that he has it on radar. Yes, he does. He knows exactly what it is, but he has not yet reacted. There it is. Tank moving over. Get two hits on that assault bot and you will be good to go. On the south side, we've also got some more raiding from Bravo. Two more flares and a scout headed out. I'm going to try to pick up anything that moves this way, namely an engineer that probably has a reclaim order. Yes, it does. Well, a build order. Anyway, pick up en any engineer headed to this side. Bravo is going for the ultimate level of early game aggression. He went first bomber, as did Jaguar, but he was slightly faster at it. And he's got the three labs out. Jaguar did get a lab out to the back here which did pick up an engineer kill so kudos there i did not even see it coming out at the beginning but these guys are going toe to toe virtually identical in the early build now we've got our third land factory going down for bravo in his base that is just now completed and our third land factory is coming up for jaguar who is now also building t1 power that is going to get shut down by a T1 bomber killing that engineer. Unfortunate events there. Where is Jaguar's bomber? Right out here in the middle. Got two kills. The labs that were on that side. So he's going to be able to protect his engineer with that. Might be worth it strictly for the reclaim that that engineer will grab. Then over on this side, we've got a land factory number four going down. Uh, looks like four, five factories planned for Achieve Jaguar. Of course, you're gonna want some land factories in some other areas. We've got one up on the front so that you can more quickly react to circumstances on either edge. Jaguar moving his engineer back after he claims the front mass to get the rock over here. I think that's a smart thing because he's got to know that ACU is headed in that direction. He probably got a scout over it just a moment ago and it's more valuable to keep that engineer alive and try to do some other things with it than to go up against an ACU in an attempt to grab, what, 50 mass, something like that, before that ACU can kill it. Now we're starting to see some units coming out. Excuse me, in the end, it doesn't even matter. No, this map boils down to choke points because while some units can path across the bottom portion of this rock, this is still a relatively narrow passageway. So each base essentially has three choke points that they have to guard in order to keep the base safe. 
Then once you move out into the middle, there is some open area where you do need units to control, but it's not that critical because there's only four ma mass extractors in the center. You're much better off going for the edge where you've got four mass extractors in a concentrated fashion. You've got two that you can reasonably maintain control of. And then you've got the one over here where if you're guarding the choke point on this side, you can claim that mass extractor. So this tends to turn into maybe not a tech war, but it's not necessarily a spam war either. Add to that the fact that you've got 10 mass extractors in your base, you usually end up with shenanigans being pulled shortly into the game and then the map rapidly collapsing. On the north side, we've got Bravo moving over with some tanks that are probably not going to be very successful due to the fact that we now have tanks streaming in that direction. Does Jaguar have radar coverage? He does not, but he does have an air scout over there, which is just as good, if not even better, because it's a mobile T1 radar. Ah, ah, ah. The, the ACUs do not need to be put out on the front line. Because, of course, we're dealing with Auroras that outrange the ACU. Uh, the advantage here is that both players have Aeon, and they can both get the range upgrade on their commanders for less than the price of the gun upgrade on other ACUs, and then they can reach out at will and hit all of these tanks. Of course, if you go for the double gun upgrade, it gets even better for you because you're able to dish out all of that damage and outrange basically anything at the T1 phase and a lot of stuff at the T2 phase. Bravo doing pretty well on Eco right now. He secured his outside expansion much earlier than Jaguar did, and he's not reclaiming because he has way too much mass. So if at any point he decides that he needs some, he's got another 500 mass to call on right there. Jaguar is going to claim his mass on the north side, which is going to feed his addiction to T2 mass extractors, if I had to guess. Uh, no, it is not. He is actually building more factories and more power so more units is the name of the game not necessarily teching up it's very easy to fall into a trap where if you start teching you slightly fall behind on the number of units and then run into a situation where you cannot protect the mass extractors that you just teched looks like we've got a t2 max going down for bravo as we mentioned before he does have extra mass in the coffers he's got available reclaim and he has got his expansion a whole lot earlier, so he should get a leg up in eco. Do we have any upgrades underway over here? No, we do not. Jaguar for once abandoning the ways of the eco war in favor of the T1 spam. I'm still nervous about this ACU placement because that's quite a few Auroras that could potentially walk in and edge out your ACU. Nice push from Jaguar, going to push some Auroras around this side and kill off at least one of those mass extractors. I also love the T1 point events directly in the choke point. Neither one of these players is building very many T1 artillery at all. In fact, I don't think Jaguar has built a single one. And there's maybe a couple anti-air in this mix. Ah, no, I don't see any artillery anywhere. So yeah, point events is going to be super overpowered as it will stop a near infinite number of auroras as long as the wall sections stay up. Looks like Jaguar's going for the gun upgrade. Bravo, not quite. He is just kind of sitting here with his ACU trying to decide what to do and focusing his attention elsewhere. We are starting to see a slight advantage in unit count from Jaguar. So we've got 84, and then you'll notice that he's got quite a few T1 land scouts mixed in as well as having his radar up that is giving him a tremendous uh advantage as far as his engagement goes we've got 41 auroras this may be the collapse that i was talking about uh 78 versus 35 but i don't think jaguar sees the extent to which he outnumbers his opponent because he did pull back slightly he needs to get an air scout over there and see that there are barely any auroras protecting this base and he needs to just come in and kill it. This T2 mass extractor could have been many more tanks about, uh, hold on. I'm not going to try to guess the number of tanks. I used to know right off the top of my head. Somebody posted to the chat. If you remember how many tanks a T2 mass extractor is worth. That might have been the difference in deciding that engagement. We've got range upgrade going down on this ACU now. So first gun upgrade on the way. And second gun upgrade nearly complete 
for Jaguar. So it looks like we're going to have all T1 Auroras and gun comms engaging in the middle. Pretty dang even footing, if you ask me. Jaguar slowly getting his units whittled away as he gets some at a time trapped on the wrong side of the rock or engages with too few. And the clumped up units from Bravo are able to slowly clear them out. Look at the pile of mass that's available right here. Jaguar placing an attack move order on the front to reclaim at the maximum possible range. Bravo has claimed 3,000 mass and Jaguar on the other hand has reclaimed 6,500. So over double the reclaim value to Jaguar and that number is only going to climb as he continues with these engineers on the front. Bravo is now starting the second gun upgrade but his ACU is far away from the fight and Jaguar is about to wade in with his gun comp. So he is going to be able to eliminate a pretty large number of tanks with his ACU before Bravo can even bring his commander into the fight. On the north side, we have got a grand total of 12 land factories. And Bravo has got his hands on 15. But again, we've got a little bit of an eco discrepancy and a reclaim discrepancy, although Bravo... Bravo is doing a very good job of balancing his economy. Well done there, good sir. He should outproduce Jaguar ever so slightly in land, especially considering that one of these land factories is strictly producing engineers. Jaguar now wading into the fray with his double gun upgraded commander. That rock soaking up a little bit of damage, but as he moves forward, he is going to wreak more and more havoc among these forces. Killing off an Aurora every two shots. He does have overcharge, so he's going to be able to hit up these units really hard. As the number of tanks dwindle, his stays the same as his ACU is pretty much the only thing on the front line. We've got, oh my goodness, you went for a T2 factory upgrade in the middle of that? If he can get a T2 engineer out and get a T2 point events online, that might just be worth it, but the ACU is now waiting into range of the base. The Auroras are trying to kite out and maintain control, at least slow the approach of this ACU. If he starts building T2 tanks, I'm going to be very disappointed because with the overcharge on that ACU, he can easily eliminate any units that come out of that factory. Come on, you got to build. You can't have an idle factory. That's not going to do. Bravo waiting in with his gun up commander as well. Jaguar may have bitten off more than he can chew. He's having to fall back in the face of all those Auroras that are coming out of the base. His own units now closing. He diverted his forces to the right-hand side to try to kill that expansion, but now he's in danger of losing his commander. He's trying to play Ring Around the Rosie with the comm on this rock. Maybe he can deny enough damage to survive. 5,000 HP versus 4,000 HP. We've got a T1 point defense now in range of the ACU. Bravo having to fall back as the blue Auroras move into range. Now we've got all of Jaguar's forces coming in. 1,500, 1,400 HP. He's pushing forward, does not need to do that. 1,000 HP on the ACU. Hopefully he can regen a little bit of that. No! And he's out. What killed him? Somebody posted in the chat. I'm going to have to do a fast action replay on that one. 1,000 HP to dead in a split second. That may have been... That may have been the tanks on the north side. I don't think that was a control K. It was a control K? I mean, he shouldn't have. He probably control K'd because of the loss of the bottom right. Okay, valid point. I didn't see anything in the immediate vicinity. I will post in the uh, YouTube version of this what actually happened because I will go back and watch it, but I do tend to side with the chat. It, it looked like a control K strictly because there was nothing near him that could have killed him that quickly at 1,000 HP. But if we look at this, I mean, he had a T2 mass extractor. He had a T2 factory. I, I don't know. Jaguar had all of the map. Yeah, that was probably that was probably GG. 
Good game. Jaguar, well played. Slow and methodical once again. Crushed his opponent with the T1 land phase. Was able to divert enough to secure the other expansion after the ACU moved out. And in the end, just won through attrition. Well done. Well done indeed. I think the downfall of Bravo was this TG Mass Extractor. I really do. If he would have had more build power earlier... He had more build power total than Jaguar as the game moved on, but at the earliest phase, he didn't build as many units as Jaguar spammed up to, and then he invested his reclaim into a T2 mechs, whereas Jaguar invested his reclaim into more units. There's a T2 mechs over here now, but that was made after Jaguar bit into all of the reclaim on the front. So I can forgive that one a little bit more easily. That is going to wrap everything up for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like and share it with someone. If you want to support the channel, catch the streams, or join the Discord, check out the links in the description. Thank you all for being at least partially insane, and I will see you in the next one.